Mario Kart Double Dash. If you didn't own this game, I don't think you had a GameCube. I still remember the ad for this game and how ridiculous it was. It was like this old woman throwing stuff in her bag at the car behind them at an airport. And then she tags the driver and he's about to throw a suitcase and it cuts the gameplay. That was the moment I yelled to my mum that we needed to get it. A nostalgic trip for any millennial. But how do the stages stack up? Let's sort that opinion once and for all. I watched a couple videos and played a bit of it myself to like refresh my memory of this game. And it just oozes charm, it really does. They really need to bring back two-person kart mechanics for Mario. Mario Kart 9. Eh? Hey, huh? Nintendo? Either way, we only got 16 stages this time around. They didn't really invent the whole retro stuff yet. That was in DS, which I think I'll make a tier list for that as well. But let's get into this one, shall we? One thing you might immediately notice is that there's no F tier. I don't believe any track in this game is F tier. I think they all got at least satin going for them. And none of them are so bad they're irredeemable. But let's start with the first one, Luigi Circuit. You don't really ever start a Mario Kart game with your best track. Now, I don't usually advocate for remaking the first stage in a Mario Kart game. I think there's, I think if they were going to remake stages for like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or something, or even Mario Kart 9, I think there's better choices than the first stage in a game because usually they're not too interesting. But I think Luigi Circuit has enough going for it. When the track starts, you get that boost, you go forward here, and then one thing you might notice is that there's like arrows pointing one way and then an arrow pointing the other. And you're thinking, oh, what's going on there? But then once you go around the loop, the loop de loop over here and go back around, you'll notice that you're going back the same way you came. You can kind of see on the mini map up there. So what this leads to is that once you get later in the tracks, so if I fast forward this here, there's instances in which like the person in first is driving one way and like the people in like six or seventh of driving behind them like that, you can see it. So this leads to like very, very good griefing opportunities. I'd love to see an online Mario Kart game in the modern day. I think that ability to be able to grief the person in front really gives it that extra little bit of edge. I know I used to do that when I was a kid and I would happily do it again if this track was remade. So I think it has enough going for it on that front to make it at least somewhat interesting, more so than your usual Luigi circuits or figure eight circuits, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna, but it's a bit, it's a good choice. It's a good choice. I'm never going to complain with Luigi Circuit. Never at all. Right, the next one is Peach Beach. Now, I think I mentioned in my Mario Kart Wii one that uh, they removed some of the shortcuts. Like, for example, over here, you can see in the GameCube version, there's a, there's a not shortcut. There's like a little secret. You can go through a pipe there to get a double item box, which was a nice bit of charm that they removed from the Wii version. Understandably so, because uh, since there's... It's a double item box that you get in there. So having two items in this early stage of the race can be very useful in a game like this, but not so useful in Mario Kart Wii. And I think that's going to be a theme of this game. There's a lot of charm that this game had that whenever the tracks were even remade, didn't really translate as well. Getting back to the track, I think it's a, I think it's a solid enough track. It has a r relatively unique gimmick with the Cataquan, the high tide and low tide, make, making sure that you play within the bounds of the tide. I feel like Mario Kart Double Dash was a game where instead of like fine tuning game Mario Kart game design to its nth degree, I feel like they were just like, if they could add something, they just did. Like, I think a good example is this. Like, look, so you see there's items here. So you can easily pick up two items to stack on two items. But for some reason also, if you go around, you can just kind of, you can kind of just about see it there. You can kind of just about make it out. But if you go around the fountain, you can also get a double. I don't know why you would do that, but it's kind of nice that it's there, you know? What I used to do when I was a kid was whenever the race would start, I would immediately turn around, go around for that double and then play the game again, just to kind of flex on my younger siblings, you know? I think this, get, this track has enough going for it. I'm gonna put it in B as well. I still like Luigi's mentioned, uh, Luigi's mentioned. Wrong game. I still like Luigi's Circuit a bit better, so I'm going to put it slightly higher, but I do like Peach Beach quite a lot. Next one is Baby Park, and uh, <laughs> uh, this track is an absolute Marmite track, as in you either love it or you hate it. There's only one correct opinion here on the Sir Musty channel. It's a Nintendo Masterclass. Anyone with a different opinion, you're just wrong. This is a hill I'll die on. You know, I understand with my Warriors Goldmine opinion. Is there anyone that actually likes this track? Don't ever come to my Mario Kart ever again, okay? <laughs> it's an unpopular hill, but I'm willing to die on it regardless. This is, uh, I'm not even willing to concede that this is an unpopular opinion. If you hate Baby Park, you hate babies and parks, and you need to touch grass and get pregnant. I don't know. <laughs> This game has uh, special items. Each uh, character has a special item they can get. And of course, Bowser and Bowser Jr.'s one is the ba is the infamous Bowser shell. It's a shell that's so large, it transcends the green barrier, the like the grassy barrier on the side. So you get, if you fling a Bowser shell into the into the fray, all bets are off. It doesn't matter whether you're first, eighth, the Bowser shell consumes all. It is a fantastic way to play the game. And if I ever was playing Baby Park, I'd always make sure to pick Bowser Jr. But I don't know how you can hate Baby Park. I don't, I don't know how you can do it. I don't, know, I don't know how. So someone someone tell me, how, why do you hate this track? I really want to know. As far as I'm concerned, it's a Nintendo Masterclass. It's absolute pure chaos distilled down to seven laps 
on an oval. I love it. Uh, what is next? Dry, dry desert. <sighs> it's a desert track. What can I say? They're usually bland to look at since it's all just orange, orange, and more orange. And as much as I love uh, Mario Kart Double Dash, I, I'm not really going to defend Dry, dry desert. It's pretty boring. One thing I do like about this over its uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe counterpart is the tornado. You might, if you've only played Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, you might not recognize the tornado that uh, wisps through the track. You can see it here, if you get hit on it, it just wisps you up and throws you back down. It's a really horrible slowdown. Don't know why they took it out in Mario Kart Deluxe. I thought it was a nice little extra gimmick. Maybe they thought it was a bit too much. But yeah, the tornado is gone. And of course, this section here isn't an oasis like it is in the 8 Deluxe version. It's just a simple hilly mountain area, which uh, I think is a bit more bland than the 8 Deluxe version. But I don't want to make too many comparisons. This game did come out first after all. But that still doesn't save it from the fact that it's still a relatively bland track. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. If I, if, if I see you, if you come to my house when I'm playing Mario Kart Double Dash and you pick Dry Dry Desert, I'm telling you to change tracks, bro. It's my house. I'm player one. I get to VO tracks, okay? So what is next? Mushroom Bridge. I think this is an example of a stage that's quite charming. That uh, is charm kind of got like reduced once it got remade. I think it was from Mario Kart DS. But right here at the start of the track, I, I don't think this gentleman does it, but you could go onto the right immediately and go in a pipe that would give you a double item box right after it. And since getting the stronger items were based on position, not distance, you would immediately start the game with like a star and you could just knock people out. It was really fun. Uh, but other than that, the stage doesn't really have too much going for it that I particularly enjoyed. And of course, my, my favorite quote unquote shortcut probably in the entire series. It was so, it was such a non-shortcut that they removed it when they remade this for Mario Kart DS. So you might not recognize this if you haven't played this version specifically, but you might notice there's speed pads on the size of these. Um, now this shortcut was very, very hard to do unless you deliberately slowed down and lined yourself up to get it. Because if your car is slightly off, you tumble away. So it was not worth it at all, which is uh, one of the few times where they've removed the shortcut in a Mario Kart, future Mario Kart game, where I'm just like, you know what, I think that's fair. I think it's fair removing this one. I, I like it. It's all right. It's a, it's a, no, it's not a C tier. I think C tier is fair. It doesn't really have too much going for it, so I can't really rate it too highly. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain too much if you pick it. Uh, next is Mario Circuit. I do quite like Mario Circuit. Usually shortcuts don't really factor into my enjoyment of a track or not. I usually like the stage design, the music, the fact that you can like skip like a good chunk of the track. I think it's two mushrooms you need at least to skip through in this entire grassy patch. It can be a really big lifesaver. So once you get past the chain jump, there's not really much going for this track here. You kind of go in a tunnel. Uh, crazy. <laughs> Nice. CPU hit itself. There's not really much going for it until you reach the end where there's like bumpy hills and goombas. But maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a little nostalgic bias talking, but uh, I think it just about creeps into B. Just about. While it doesn't do anything special, it's, uh, it's special to my heart. Daisy Cruiser next. Not one of the most memorable tracks, if you ask me personally. I think it's got a decent bit of it going for it. I think this water section here, I think one thing that's going to annoy me, it's not the track's fault, but I think one thing that's going to annoy me if this track eventually gets remade is the fact that this water bit is going to be non-hazardous. I kind of like the fact that like you have to start the uh, race by drifting around this. You can actually drift, um, drift here and then go around the pool on this side. It, again, it's not really worth it, so I don't know why you would. And I think the uh, dining table area, if, if that's what you want to call it, I think it's quite nice. Since the ship is constantly rocking, uh, these little tables kind of shift around everywhere and the items kind of shift with it. I think it's a nice little hazard that you kind of have to be a bit dynamic about avoiding. And I think there's this underground bit here. This person doesn't go down it. But uh, this is underground bit there, which is a bit slower since you have to drop to the ground before you can drive, but you get double. I think this game had a theme of uh, if you're willing to take the slower path for a double item, since getting two items is, you know, twice as good as getting one. Math sign up. I, I feel the same way about this as I did about Daisy uh, Circuit in Mario Kart Wii. If I was listing off all the tracks in Mario Kart Double Dash, I feel like this would be the one I'd forget because it didn't really leave too much of an impression on me. Should that be enough to factor into its placing? Uh, probably, I would say so. I think it's better than Mushroom Bridge, but I don't really remember it too much. And if you picked that, I'd be like, oh, sure. There's better tracks as far as I'm concerned, but it's not horrible. I don't know what it is about Daisy tracks that are forgettable. Is there a theme? Maybe it's my Daisy bias. But either way, next track is Waluigi State. I love this track as a kid. This is like my favorite track to play as a kid. The music's a bop. The, 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 I, just, I just like the idea of like driving in a car in like a stadium like this. It's always quite, I just, I just like, I really like the aesthetic and like being able to like boost up and grab an item and then get it. And then you can skip past here as a nice little shortcut as well. And of course, uh, you know, as a kid, I'd always be extra fancy. Instead of like going in, you have to like slalom in between all the piranha plant pipes. But sometimes I was feeling fancy, you could like go up and around like that. But that's if you were feeling fancy. That's if you were an S tier driver like me as a kid. And like I remember looking at the comments in my Mario Kart Wii tier list one. And a lot of people don't rate this track too highly, which is a shame because I really like it. It's got a little something for everyone, you know? Might be a controversial choice. 
but I'm sticking with it. It's A tier. I like the fact that I can usually come up with some, you know, at least analytical reasons as to why I like a track. With Waluigi Stadium, it's just, I like it, okay? Sherpaland did the, the mandatory ice track in every Mario Kart game that they insist on using as a gimmick because we all love ice tracks, don't we? I love ice tracks. Love them so much. If, if I'm going to try and compliment it as best I can, is the fact that if you hit these uh, icicles, uh, it kind of freezes you and stops your momentum while making you drop your items, which I think is a nice way of punishing. I think in Mario Kart 8, you just spin out like normal, which I think was a nice touch. I'm kind of reaching, aren't I? You can tell. It's a, it's, you have to be something special to get by as an ice or desert track. So let's just move on, shall we? To a better track, Mushroom City. I really like this track. I like this track a lot. But as far as I'm concerned, this track has never been remade in any Mario Kart I've played. And it's an absolute shame. I don't know why. It's such a good track. I think this track perfectly encapsulates what a city is trying to be in that you can always take more than one path to get to your destination. And if you're a city slicker like most people are, you can take a cheeky shortcut on that pink path to the side there. And of course, uh, in, a t in an age where I grew up without the internet being absolutely rampant, it definitely wasn't me who was told by a friend in class that even though there's a big do not enter sign in this little area, which just leads to nothing but a death zone, I definitely wasn't told that there's actually a secret shortcut there with a cannon that takes you immediately to the next lap. I definitely wasn't told that. I definitely didn't fall for it. Same way I didn't fall for Sonic in Melee. Definitely not. Definitely not. That's just a... <laughs> I really like this track. It's, it's, got, it's got a lot going for it. I would have been even higher than... Well, we just stadium, honestly. I put the top the top of A tier, and it needs to be remade for Mario Kart. I don't want it in the deluxe packs because they're not going to do the stage justice, all right? I want it in Mario Kart 9. I want it to be the starring act in its own Mario Kart game. It deserves that. Uh, next, we've got a Yoshi Circuit. I think this has been like remade like, what, three times? It's it's, it's all right. It's, it's solid. I don't think it's particularly bad. I don't think it does anything particularly well. Uh, although I do have to give points to specifically the GameCube version as there's a nice little shortcut. There's a little bump in the road right there. If you were to jump over there with a mushroom, you'd get enough speed to go inside a secret underground tunnel. I would forgive you for not noticing this because in both the DS and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe versions, they removed it. It was nice to have a little shortcut there. I don't know if it was technically even faster than taking the normal path, but just having an extra path there just adds a lot of charm. They did add the flower patch shortcut in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. In this game, um, this flower patch is solid, you can't drive through there, whereas in 8 Deluxe you can. I guess they made up for it in a way, but come on. Using a mushroom to drive in a secret underground tunnel, or using the, mus the mushroom to drive through some flower patches. And of course, shout out to uh, Yoshi Copter. We love Yoshi Copter in this house. We stand Yoshi Copter. Good track. I like it. It's solid. I'm gonna put it in... I'm gonna put it in... I think B tier is fine. I think mid B tier is fine. I think that's a good spot for it. DK Mountain. DK. Donkey, got a nice cannon to start you off to take you to the mountain proper, the very angry mountain. Although if I was hot in the head all the time, I'd be pretty angry as well. <laughs> Even though the cannon's a nice little uh, gimmick, I did like I do like the animations of seeing the character in the back barely hanging on for dear life. This rocky section is when it gets, get, gets a lot more interesting. The size of the rock dictates how much you respect their boundaries, and I think there's a nice shortcut which this gentleman doesn't take here, but. Uh, right as right along this path here, you can immediately just jump to the right and take a nice little shortcut and you get an item there as well, which is always nice. But of course, I think the most memorable part about this track is the Bridge of Death. Many a giant banana and Bowser show were thrown back on this bridge. If you fell off this bridge, you'd get sent all the way back. It was harsh. It was unforgiving. It would ruin an entire race for you. Uh, I'm gonna slap in A tier. Bottom A tier, but A tier nonetheless. Wario Coliseum. Another stage which I don't believe has ever been remade so long that it's only two naps. I kind of do want this track to be remade because I'd love to see what they would do with it in a modern Mario Kart. But like having played it and like watching it now, I, I do feel like it's a bit long for no reason. Like I, I feel like when they were designing, they were like, guys, do you think we, we made it too long? We have to go back. Nah, just make it too late. You get the big speed boost, you go down the spiral section and then there's just this bit here with just a, a bunch of turns, nothing really too interesting happening here. And then you get a drop. And then you get into the final section, which probably has like a little something somewhat interesting where you either go around and take the safer route and grab an item, or you can take the middle path and speed up and then speed up again. Although in this game, you do have to be dead on. You can't angle yourself in the air. So you have to be dead on when you're going for this part, which is a bit risky. And you don't, and you risk not getting an item at all. So someone could punish you if they went around, which uh, I think they needed more of that in this stage, you know, because there isn't really too much going for it other than that. I still want it to be remade though. I think that's my GameCube bias showing though. I'm not gonna say it's bad, but it's not the best. I'm gonna put it here. I think before I replayed the stage, I would have been like, oh yes, they definitely need to bring this back for Mario Kart 9. It's purely off the virtue of the fact that it's never been remade before. But you know, if they skip this, 
I think I'd be okay. Dino, Dino, Jungle. Now, I do believe this track has already been remade once. I don't remember the game. And if I don't remember the game, that's usually a sign that it was in Mario Kart 7. <laughs> no Mario Kart 7 slander here. I'll slander that game some more some other time. I actually, as much, I don't really like this stage that much as a kid, but like having played it and watching it, I actually kind of like it a lot. It's got everything I like about uh, Mario Kart stages. It's got a nice little risk, consistent theme of risk and reward. So for example, you can go around the uh, dinosaur here and uh, take the safer route, or you can go through the dinosaur's legs, risk getting both stomped or blocked, but you get an item out of it. There's like three different paths here you can take. You can go that path there, which speeds you up, but the bridge is very narrow. You can take this yellow bridge, which is like the basic one, uh, very quite wide, or you can go around and get a double item, which the slower path with extra items. I actually usually went for the orange bridge for the double items because there's another shortcut here which is if you go to that bridge over there unfinished so you have to get a mushroom to boost right up there it's quite nice i like it it's got it's got enough going for it. enough hazards enough uh, enough u-turns i do like a nice good uh u-bend but like i want to put an a i'm gonna put it in a tier i think it deserves it definitely the one that has jumped the highest in my opinion from as a kid to as an adult at the penultimate stage bowser's castle now i wasn't very kind to the wii rendition of Bowser's Castle, but I do really like this one. Warrior Coliseum's problem is that, like, there wasn't really too much interest for a special cup stage, which is like the final cut, you know, it's supposed to be the most interesting one. Warrior Coliseum didn't really have anything interesting going for it, except the fact that it was long and two laps. I feel like Bowser Castle was enough going for it consistently throughout the track, where it makes it a really solid track to race on. But of course, you start with the thwomps, which, unlike the Wii thwomps, I think they take up a substantial amount of the carpet, so you have to slow, like, navigate around the sides. Much harder if you have a big cart as well. You have to be very, very careful of making sure and make sure you don't bump into the wall to slow yourself down. So I think the thwomps offer a genuine threat here to your both your uh, to your speed. Really, the fireballs like fling themselves up in the air before dropping down, which gives you like a nice little time to scan the field, see which side has less fireballs, and picking the side. You have another another section which is risk rewards. Uh, you can go in between the fire bars to get an item and to take the faster path, or you can go around and take the safer path. I think the CPU ahead of him opted to go with the item, which is this little area here, which is a Bowser statue constantly flinging fireballs at you. So you have to avoid them on your way down and on your way up as well. I quite like that. Watching it back, I think it, it holds up too. It's quite nice. Very, very nice. Now, where do I put it? Hmm, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it like near the top of Asia. And then, of course, we get to the final one. It's called a road. It's called a rainbow road. It is the road where you go. It's the road where you go when you die. I think if they had that as the soundtrack for the stage, I don't think I'd hate it as much. I'm not really too big on this Rainbow Road. I think it, it could even be a candidate for the worst in the series. Because it's the final stage of the game. I want them to be the right amount of uh, difficulty, but not unforgiving. For example, Mario Kart 8's Rainbow Road is not hard enough. It's just I think it's way too easy for a Rainbow Road. But this one kind of airs into unforgiving and you could call it a skill issue which it might be i'm getting old after all there's mainly one section in particular that i think is a bit unforgivable uh which i think is this section coming up ahead here this this little spiral area you have to like both turn correctly and of, like avoid the uh the, the speed like you have to kind of almost avoid the speed boost so that your angling on your drift doesn't get messed up too much but like that section is wholly unforgiving and then this section has the crime of being very boring to be honest it's just you're just you're just driving with some slight variations on left and right i feel like most of the track has the crime of being boring gamecube bias aside this track ain't it <laughs> it's, it's harsh it is quite harsh but I would rather not play this stage. These are the only three stages in the game where I'm just like, nah, bro, nah, come on, bro. Pick a different stage, man. I think there's your list, really. Well, I'm not live streaming at this at the moment. Let's, let's look around and see some other tier lists. DK Mountain seems to be a consistent top tier. Sherbet Land? S, my dude. Whose man's is this? What are you smoking or where can I get some? Uh, once again, DK Mountain is in S tier. This stage is consistently winning. Baby pot, baby pot. Oh, shoes. Uh, we got ourselves a country boy there. Mario Kart Double Dash tier list. I played this game recently, so my opinion is the freshest and the best. But of course, it's always the best. Oh, yes. I like the boldness of his statement. Let's see if his opinion actually backs up. <laughs> My opinion's only the correct opinion. Baby Park in its own bottom tier, bruh. Come on, bruh. And then he puts Rainbow Road. <laughs> Come on, bruh. You can't. You can't. Toad the Builder. You've had a howler, mate. You've had an absolute howler. Unhinged Mario Kart Double Dash tier list. Respect the honesty, but let's have a look. Baby Park. Again, Baby Park gets his own tier, but this time it's quite high. Mario Kart Double Dash tier. Yes, I am one of the enlightened. Baby Park is at least top five Mario Kart. Yes. Yes. I, I was with you when you said Baby Park, but... 
Rainbow Road? We just suck it. Daisy Cruiser is S? All right, all right, Jaron. I thought we were going to be homies, but I think that'll be it. What are your opinions? I'm sure you've already let me know. In the same way that, like, I didn't know that Moonview Highway was way more popular than I thought it was, are there any tracks that I rated popularly that you just don't agree with, or maybe the reverse? There's your lot, gamers. Have a good one.